Conversations with Nicole. Cole. Cole. Conversations with Nicole. Let's talk about it. Tell me all about it. I'm here. I wanna know what's on your mind. Ooh. The world needs to hear from you, and I'm so glad to to have a conversation to reach the nation. And it's all about you. We'll help each other to discover innovative ways to positively change the world. Greetings. Welcome to Conversations with Nicole. I am Nicole Everett, your host. And Conversations with Nicole is a talk show based in Tallahassee, Florida, focused on connecting the community through conversations. And today is what I call Mindset Monday, which is an opportunity for you, me, and my guests to talk about whatever it is we want to talk about. And today we are talking about mental health, navigating mental health in the workplace, navigating mental health in the workplace. Um, my special guest is Miss Isis Petway, not a stranger to conversations with Nicole, but before I bring her on, I want to hear from you. Where are you tuning in from? We are live on Facebook, on YouTube, and on the Greater Works Network on Roku TV. So if you will, in the comments, let us know by putting in your city and state where you're tuning in from so we can give you a shout out. This is a safe space for us to express ourselves. And so we fully expect to hear from you as we dive into this topic of navigating mental health in the workplace. Uh, I actually attended a lunch and learned that Miss um, Marissa, Oh, I think it's Battle is her last name. Marissa, please don't kill me. But she uh, talked about this, the U.S. Surgeon General's latest release uh, with a new framework for mental health and well-being in the workplace, which comes as a result of the quiet quitting, the great resignation. And so they're... Um, five essentials for workplace mental health and well-being. So I definitely invite you to check that out um, at, on the Health and Human Services um, website, hhs.gov, hhs.gov, uh, because it's definitely worth checking out. All right. So I see you, Miss Audrey Lewis in Havana, Florida. Thank you for tuning in. Please tag your friends. Let them know they need to be here uh, for this conversation. Again, this is interactive, so we do expect to hear from you. Hey there, Miss Katie. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate you right here in Tallahassee. Yeah, I think, you know, this whole, t um, the idea that uh, the workplace is not a space where we should be concerned about uh, our mental health and, and wellness is crazy. Uh, hey there, Ozzy Oz over in Virginia Beach. Thank you for being here. So folks are trickling in and, and we love it. We love it. We love it. All right. So while others of you are joining us, I am going to go ahead and read some of Isis's bio. So Isis is a current resident of Little Rock, Arkansas, and she uh, has been serving the residents in the state of Arkansas for, for quite some time. She, she, uh, she uh, is a Central High School graduate, so the, the, the famous Central High School that um, integrated the, the uh, first African-American students. Um, and so she uh, she's volunteered her time with Think Big Little Rock Initiative. She's an active PTA member with her at her son's school. She's been a volunteer. Uh, she works with clients regarding issues such as anxiety, depression, 
PTSD, suicidal ideation, life transformations, and families of origin. Um, as a mental health professional, she desires to continue the work of shattering the stigma around mental health and mental illness. And her training and current work experience includes uh, populations of various demographics and backgrounds in the inpatient setting, nonprofit programs, and residential care facilities. So she has uh, quite the, uh, the background. And she was with us, oh my gosh, I guess it was maybe April. And we talked about the, the um, counseling process, the intake process. So uh, without further ado, you all help me welcome Miss Isis Petway. Hey, Isis. Hey, I'm back. Thank you for inviting me back. My pleasure. Thank you for being back. Love your energy. Yes, ma'am. So Thank for you so the, much. You're welcome. So for the folks that may have missed you the first go around, tell them who is Isis. I told them a little bit about what you do, but tell them who are you. I knew she was going to ask me. I didn't know. Uh, I should have been ready for this. I should have been ready. I should have been ready. What's the word? You you, you, you know, you ain't got to get ready if you stay ready. Um, <laughs> it's been a day. So um, who am I? Well, um, I'm Teddy's second daughter. Um, I'm Caleb's mama. Um, <laughs> and uh, just a dope black woman who is carving her path here in this world and doing her best to live on purpose. So always open to learning and loves collecting books and reading them at some point and so you know <laughs> mm -hmm. and also trying to rest in the process you know so okay. that's just a just a little bit about me okay. <laughs> tell, tell us how you got involved in counseling oh man so the inspiration came from a family member um i'll say this um i think it was chosen for me before i chose it um, that's one thing with this field, like in college, I would work at Walmart and I think anybody who's ever worked in retail or if you've done like service work restaurants, um, people would always like want to give me their life story while they're writing their checks. Mm. And I would always be like, I'm just, I'm just taking your money, but you know, thank you for trusting me, um, with, with this information. But, um, life happened between 2013 and uh, 2013 life happened. I'll say even going back to 2012 and just navigating some different things and then being inspired by a close relatives um, battle with a diagnosis and different things. And I wanted to learn. I didn't see a lot of us in the field and just started doing my research and was inspired. And I was just like, I'm going to, it's, I'm, I'm supposed to be in the therapy field, mental health field. Um, I love what I get to do. I love the learning, got a lot of trainings to get under my belt and on this journey, but I'm grateful, grateful for where I am. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, um, I've heard of a few clinicians that had a um, either a family member, well, mostly it's been family members. I, I can't say it's been friends, but they wanted, they couldn't find a counselor that looked like them. And so they, the the family member said, "I'll go if you can find a counselor that looks like me." And so that that sent them on that journey, which I think is amazing. Absolutely, yeah. I'll even say when I went to uh, the program that I graduated from, when I went to do the um, you know the walkthrough and just kind of see what things were about, and I'll never forget when I was doing the tour. And one of the students was sitting at the table and he looked at me and he said, you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm. And I will never forget that, um, you know, and when I see him, I told him, thank you for that. And he was absolutely right. So. <laughs> wow. wow, wow, wow. That's great. That's amazing. All right. Well, we got a few more shouts out to give. Hey there, Tracy Golay and Tally. Um, my mom. Hold on, mom down in Miami. Thank you for being here. All right, Miss Tina right here in Tally, Miss Lynette right here in Midway, and Cousin Raymond in Virginia. Thank you for being here. Come on, cousins. I know, right? Cousins <laughs> going up tonight. Bam. The fam. I love it. I love it. I love the support. 
So we are about to dive into this topic of navigating mental health in the workplace. But before we do, let me read my disclaimer. <laughs> All topics past, present, and future on Conversations with Nicole are for informational purposes only. They are not to be used as a diagnosis for treatment or an answer to any personal issues related to the topic being discussed before, during, or after the program. All right. So, hey there, Chief. I see you. All right. So, um, yeah, mental health in the workplace. Well, why is that even a thing? Oh, man. Um, it's honestly always been a thing. It's gotten highlighted more in recent years as stigma around talking about mental health, mental illness mm -hmm. um, starts to shatter, you know, little by little. And we, of course, the conversation, you know, is now mainstream. Um, and so the more that we talk about it, the more that people are becoming comfortable expressing like, you know, hey, you know, things aren't that good on this side. And, you know, I've just been you know, wanting someone to, I've been waiting for somebody to speak up. So here we are. Um, you've also got more organizations who are realizing that there's a cost to this and it, you know, impacts productivity and different things of that nature. And of course, once March 2020 hit with the pandemic, everything was in the spotlight. And so um, mental health in the workplace is a very important topic um, to not only bring to the forefront, but keep to the forefront. Um, and then the way that I even got started uh, talking about this is um, I had a coworker who reached out and they were doing disability awareness week. And, you know, she said, we're talking about like the hidden disabilities, because of course we're used to seeing, um, you know, a lot of times people don't believe you're differently abled if they don't see it, you know, they've got to see something that's assisting mm -hmm. you, but you have a lot of people who are suffering in silence because a lot of times they're not believed, um, you know, that they are dealing with different things. And so, mm -hmm. um, she wanted to talk about, you know, the hidden disabilities. And I was just like, mental health in the workplace and kind of started pulling things together because, you know, what happens if you, you have a coworker who is diagnosed with bipolar one disorder or major depressive disorder, they're not going to talk about that in the workplace, mm -hmm. but, you know, not taking into consideration that that is a, them having to manage that is a part of their ability to do what they need to do, um, you know, and things of that nature. So I was just like, this matters so we got to talk about it <laughs> indeed, indeed that is quite i like well i say i like but that term hidden disability seem like i've heard that before but we don't talk about that and so that's great no we don't um yeah. you know and the way that i came to um you know when she first presented that and i was just like but I, you know, started thinking about, you know, I have a uh, have a relative that is diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder. Now, mm -hmm. it's the high functioning side of it, and yeah. a lot of times when people think of an autism diagnosis, they think of the stimming, they think of the nonverbals, um, they think of the the more severe end of the spectrum versus the other side of the high functioning where they are verbal. Mm -hmm. You know, they can function in certain ways, but they're thinking tends to be different. And so a lot of, you know, and it's just like, because I don't see what I'm used to it being described as, you know, what happens when my thinking or I get overwhelmed or, you know, some of the symptoms that take place, mm -hmm. um, because what you're used to defining is not what you see. And so again, you've got people, coworkers who are managing and dealing with things. Um, what happens to the coworker who is diagnosed? With ADHD and they forgot their meds that day and they can't focus and they can't produce, you know, like they like they need to, um, you know, so just I started thinking about that and I was just like, this matters in the workplace. So Yeah, for sure. So talk to us a little bit about some of those um, hidden disabilities, what what they potentially are. I mean, if you mentioned ADHD, um, but what are some of the other ones that that we may not be aware of? Oh, man. Um, you mean just as far as like diagnosis or mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest with you, you could cover most of the mental health diagnosis because people have learned. Let's be honest. People have learned how to mask. Yeah. You know, I've, and the mental exhaustion that occurs around that in itself 
And so you can pretty much cover the spectrum um, some of the things in the DSM. Now, again, a lot of people have learned how to mask. And of course, mm-hmm. as long as they're, if they're on medication management, but you know, for those that aren't, they've, they've learned how to, this is how I have to compartmentalize. This is how I have to go into the workplace. This is how I have to present. And then when I come out, you know, boom. So. Mm. Okay. Wow. Uh, yeah. Lynette said that's the entire DSM. <laughs> exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Exactly. Um, because people are in, in, you know, I was going to get into this later, but there, I mean, of course, when, you, when you're dealing with the stigma and so you have fear, like if my coworker or my boss finds out I could lose my job because that means that they're not going to think that I'm up to par. And so there's a lot that goes into that. So um, I was like, I'm going to tap into that later. <laughs> oh, well, well, carry us then. Let me away. <laughs> I think I'm going to tap into that later. Um, what I was going to ask, can we kind of ask the li- listeners one? Absolutely. Thing? Okay. Um, so I wanted to ask the listeners, um, and I gave a presentation on this, so I'm kind of pulling from that. Um, yeah, any- take your time. Okay. I was like, anybody who was here last time, y'all know I got notes, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you in good always- company. You in good company, girl, because I got my notebook ready right here. I got you. Um, so I want to hear from the listeners. Um, how has your workplace impacted your mental health? What are some ways mm. you've realized your workplace um, has impacted your mental health? Like, have you noticed um, in different environments where you work, did you have certain symptoms that escalated? Like, did you notice a change in your mood because you had to go into this place that, you know, we could term as toxic? I have a love hate relationship with that word, but, um, but how has your workplace either past or present impacted your mental wellness, your, your mental health? All right. So y'all in the comments, let us know how has your workplace work environment impacted your mental health? And let me circle back and say, Hey to Whitney, who's right here in Tally and my cousin, Denise, who is in Texas. Yes. Cousins. Tell you the cousins are showing up. I love it. Yes. Yes, cousins. I love the family support. Mama said I'm here. That's right. She takes me here from from Miami to Texas to Virginia and all in between. They right here. Got you. But as they answer that, I'm going to read off kind of a few statistics and I'm going to read off the money statistics because that's what gets everybody's attention. And so, um, all right, so these numbers are pulled from studies conducted by organizations uh, such as SAMHSA, that Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration, and then the CDC. Um, So when we don't talk about mental illness, mental health in the workplace, Mm -hmm. um, it costs $193.2 billion in lost earnings each year. How much? One. $193.2 193.2 billion in lost earnings each year. Depression and anxiety or huh, depression and anxiety disorders cost the global economy one trillion in lost productivity each year. The rate of unemployment is higher among US adults who have mental illness, and that's 6.4% compared to those who do not, and that's around 5.1%. And this was pulled from uh, SAMHSA, which is Substance Abuse Mental Health Services. Um, This is a study that they did along with the CDC. So it costs money when we don't have this conversation. So you think about if I am dealing with a very severe depressive episode and I can't even get out of the bed to wash, to do hygiene. Um, I can't even get out of the bed to care to get my kids to school. So that's absences where they miss. And then I'm not going to work if I I don't even want to get out the bed. It's heavy. It's I just don't want to deal with anything. So depending on the type of job that I have, um, do I take a leave of absence? If I'm in an hourly position, that's wages, you know, that's wages lost. And then you know, managerial staff have to, you know, dealing with a shortage of staff and things of that nature. And so it costs when we do not have this conversation. Um, Now, as we all know, so this is coming from Mind the Workplace 2022 report. You can find this on the Mental Health America website. This came out back in February. Mm -hmm. I mean, Nicole and I kind of talked about this earlier, but the great resignation, we have been hearing about that more and more. So over four, it was reported in September of 2021, 4.4 4 million people resigned from their positions due to inflexibility, 
burnout or a reevaluation of life priorities. So my next question for the listeners. Well, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. So we got Dr. Terry Parks on from Atlanta, one of my CWN guests. He said it allowed me to be a better therapist. That's his okay. response to your question. Okay. And then uh, Donda, who's here in Tally, she said holding team building exercises, icebreakers weekly. So I'm imagining she's saying that maybe um, as, you know, well, she, you, the question was, how has your workplace impacted your mental health and wellness? So maybe this is something that's being done. As a result of Donda, maybe you can give us a little bit more clarity on that, because really the the question is, how has it impacted your mental health and wellness? Yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead. Question number two. OK. All right. So the other one is, um, do you all pay more attention to your mental health since the pandemic hit? Do you all find yourselves tuning in more to your uh, wellness and um I'll stop there because I'll keep going. <laughs> okay. So do you pay more? Question number two, if you will, in the comments, play along, y'all. Do you pay more attention to your mental health and wellness since the pandemic, since March of 2020? Are you more aware of your mental health and well-being in the workplace? All right. So um, Donda said holding those things has helped in the workplace. Got it. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. All right. Whitney said yes. Okay. okay. Is Whitney the only person? <laughs> I know I have. <laughs> All right. I'm raising my church finger too. All right. Chris said absolutely. Okay. Thank you. All right. So okay. we got five. Donna said yes too. Okay. All right. What I want that's what we like to hear. Um <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what we like to hear. Like, um, because it's you know, I I know the conversation definitely, of course, most clinicians can tell you that the waiting list got longer, the demand is is still here. A lot of us, you know, still have waiting lists. Um, and now what we're seeing is the research beginning to emerge about the impact of COVID. And now there's more research going into, you know, long COVID. And um, right now, I know, in, I know in our state, there is a huge focus on the youth population mm -hmm. um, and how it's escalated with our babies that are in school and then even uh, college. And so um, I, I know that that's a lot of the different research that's coming out at this point. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll even say for myself, I had to pay attention to not burning out because I literally started, I graduated from my program in December of 2019 and it was out of the frying pan, literally into the fire. Mm. Um, so I, I have literally started as a therapist in, um, I do a lot of crisis counseling at this point, um, but it was go time. And I'm thankful for my clinical supervisor um, she's great. I'm so thankful for her. And I mean, she has navigated us, you know, through a lot. And, you know, she was very adamant about that. She was just like, you know, I don't need y'all burning out. Um, you know, she was like, I need y'all to make sure you're paying attention and checking in with yourselves. If you need to use supervision as a way to check in for those of you who have a therapist, make sure that you're checking in with them. Um, but that was so important because a lot of us who were, you know, starting out, got licensed and then we were in, we were like, I'm burning out already. And we only like a year to two years in. This is, you know, this is not good. Right. <laughs> so um, we've definitely had to find our pace. And, you know, one more, you know, again, love my clinical supervisor because, she, I mean, she's been really great at making sure that um, that we're OK along this way. Indeed. Yeah, I think the, um, you know, hold on, let me say hey to Shirley in Tallahassee. Hey, Shirley. I think um, the other thing about work, too, is that we spend so much time there. Yes. Right? We do. I mean, you think about it. We're up and we're there for maybe eight, most of the time, eight hours, 12 hours, depending on where you work and how you work. If mm -hmm. it's, you know, factory based and you're there, I work in a hospital. So I, mm -hmm. I'm with nurses who work 12 hour shifts. 
Um, I work eight hours. And so we we are there. It's it's a huge part of our lives. And, you know, you ever heard in the interviews where they'll go, you know, how do you keep your personal and your professional separate? And it's just like you do your best. But a lot of like you said, a lot of our time is spent in the workplace. It is. It is. It is. It is. Hey there, Dr. Standifer. Thank hey, you. Hey, Dr. Standifer. Hey. Um, and so one of the things that uh, the study found was that mental health conversations have increased in the workplace nationwide, um, but they are starting to recognize that the conversation alone isn't enough to impact employee health outcomes Mm -hmm. and so you we can talk about it but what what we gonna do do you know are we gonna get mindfulness minutes um what does it look like to boost employee morale wait a minute Um, mindfulness (laughs) minutes what is that oh okay so what they started where i work is we got hold on derek said you full adultness yes she is derek i agree he has always been a sweetheart. And I am so proud of you. Yeah, no, I right. just want to say that I am so proud of him to see his growth. Shout out to Dr. Stanford. You still, I'm still call you Derek if it's okay. You but because I know him as a poet. But <laughs> shout out. Um all right, wait. Jamil said finding our our pace is so huge. We actually have to slow our pace down in order to know how you want to move. Yes. Listen, (laughs) listen, if you do not find your pace and I don't care what position you're in, if you don't find that pace, that is a fast track to burnout because that's a lot of times impacts your mental health. We try to do too much Mm -hmm. Um, and that ties into wanting to look a certain way in the workplace, wanting to show our competence. We're basically um hustling our we're basically putting our labor in the front to show that hey i can do this i'm competent this is what makes me worthy and that will fast track you to burn out quicker than anything else and so finding that pace and that's some awareness work and some different things and identity work that kind of comes into place you know with work and professional well that's a whole different topic and a whole different uh stream of services so now i'm gonna, I'm gonna try not to get into that um, is the clinician here in tallahassee okay mm-hmm. uh, so yeah so completely that pace that is that was so important um all right mental health in the workplace so you you heard the numbers that i presented <laughs> it's costing billions and trillions when we don't talk about it now no. Um, I think the main thing to remember is we just said it, we're at work most of the time. And what the report found is work is one of the leading causes of stress for adults in the United States and job related stress is linked to poor mental health. Mm. How many of us have been in a workplace where we loved our job? We just didn't like the person who was supervising us and we had to go into this and it was like, like, okay, I just got to get through these next eight hours. Um, but you think about the mental gymnastics that you have to do to get through those next eight hours because you've got somebody in a position and it's just like, is it worth it? Is this, I love what I do, but is it worth it for me to stay with this person? Um, and then poor mental health cost employers indirectly through lost productivity due to absenteeism and presenteeism. So mm. here's what that means is yeah, absenteeism and Presenteeism? Mm-hmm. I, that was my first time hearing that word too. So this is how they broke it down. Okay. All right. So this means that I'm going to physically show up at work. I'm going to do just enough that it doesn't bring attention to get me in trouble. But mentally, I'm I'm really somewhere else. I'm just, I'm doing just enough to kind of get by. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. I have not heard of it being termed like that presenteeism, but okay. Yeah. So doing just the minimum. That part. Because when I read it, I was like, oh, so they saying basically I'm physically showing up, but I'm really doing just enough to get by, just enough to be okay, just enough to like not fly under the radar too much, but they know that I'm doing what needs to be done. Mm. And so, um, And so that's so they talk about how poor mental health, you know, it leads to that, you know, that lost productivity due to absenteeism. I'm just not going to go in today. 
I just don't feel it. Just not going to go in today. Or I show up, but I'm not really present. I'm here just enough to do my what, uh, Marsha, uh, what's, what's the football player's name? Um, Lynch, you know, I'm just here mm -hmm. so I don't get fired. Right. <laughs> that's right. that's right. basically how I'm going to translate that. I'm just here so I don't get fired. Right. All right. We got a couple comments. Trisha, Trisha. Hey, Trisha. She said, I had the opposite, had a wonderful boss, made me feel guilty about trying to leave, completely lost myself. Um, Donda, some people are working jobs that are not, that, that they are not passionate about, but it pays the bills. Mm -hmm. Definitely have been part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or know what that's like. Trisha recently came to that exact reality. I checked out mentally years ago and just enough to keep my job. Wow. That's no way to live. Mm -hmm. But you you think about, is, you know, and that's, I've learned so much from doing this and I'm going to go read the Surgeon General's report that just came out. It's part of my Christmas break list. Um, but when you think about, when I saw the numbers and how much it costs, I was like, we got to talk about this. Yeah. All right. So workplace stressors include long working hours, poor social support, and unclear management and work roles. I don't know about anybody else, but that's one of my stressors is if management is not clear on what I'm supposed to be doing and I've got to kind of feel my way and train myself. Mm. That's an that's an immediate stressor for me is is not having clarity in my in my work role. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let me see. Can I ask the listeners again? You sure can. <laughs> OK. All right. So listeners. So I just named workplace stressors as a part of the um, this report. It said long working hours, poor social support, unclear management and work rules, roles, roles, roles. Um, so for you all, what are some stressors or things that you can think of? that causes you to not be okay in the workplace? Like, what are those stressors for you all? Um, mm. I'm just, I'm curious. I want to see what y'all say. All right. So what are some workplace stressors? Those of you on YouTube and on Facebook, if you would please, in the comments, let us know what are some work workplace stressors? Um. Workplace stressors. Oh, Trisha said, lack of training. Listen. Mm -hmm. Listen. <laughs> That's the number one thing. I'm like, what am I supposed to be? What am I supposed to be doing? What am I? I still got like 89 because, you know, it's the 90 day, the three month kind of. And it's like, what am I? I don't understand. No, I had I had a supervisor one time that told me, you know, I, I don't know how to do what you do, so it's 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 sink or swim. How did you navigate that? I had to figure it out. Oh man, yeah. and what did you what did you notice about your like wellness? Like, how would you leave that place? I was, um, I left. No, no, no. I mean, like each day you would leave. Like, would you? Oh, say, I was like, stressed. Oh, I was I was stressed out. <laughs> stressed out. Oh, we got a lot of comments. All right, let me say, hey, Warren, thanks for being here. Okay, Donda said, understaffing. Ooh, Dan said, bad body odor. You know what, Dan? Wow, okay. Um, unclear management for sure. Also, persons passing responsibility on like it's the collection. <laughs> Jamil better tell the truth. <laughs> Ooh, she got me choking over here. <laughs> Listen. Poor leadership. All right. Thank yes. you, Whitney. That lie that we can show up authentically. Ooh. You know what, Lynette? <laughs> Lynette just brought up a whole sermon. No, we can... right. <laughs> Listen. Lynette just brought up a whole sermon. Mm. Hey, Shay, that's my sister. Uh, being an excellent performer. That's a stressor? When you think about it, you... If, you, okay. if everybody else around you mediocre. Mm -mm. If... Okay, Lynette, give me context. Are you talking about as Black folks, Black women? All right. So, Lynette, on your comment about being an excellent performer... 
if you will give us a little more insight. Give us some more. I feel that. like I, yeah, I feel like I know what direction, but I just I want to make sure I, I okay. want to make sure because I can see where that can be a stressor. All right. I, um. Oh, hold on. Hey, Miss Doris, thank you for being here. All right, Dan said poor management. Listen, every time. All right, uh, Warren. People thinking that they can do foolishness when it's totally busy. And you back them up and the person at fault is texting. Then you say, hey, backed up. And they say, let me finish this text. Warren got a specific scenario for you. <laughs> Warren said, look, I need you to help me out. and get. Said, we need to help these customers. He and said, put the phone it, up. <laughs> he said it was stressing him. Okay. Warren said, put the phone up. Listen, understood. Some really good stressors. Um, no, absolutely. Um definitely the poor management that's that's a huge one that was in the you know report when you don't have poor clear management, management um unclear management understaffing i think that's been a, a huge one and it has yeah and trisha the first one which was lack of training nope that absolutely um i know at one point um, in the hospital when COVID was at its peak and repeating myself constantly. Yeah. See that Eric one. said, co-workers talk in clicks. Don't communicate effectively, truthfully, and, and some have hidden agendas. Mm. Wow. Ain't that the truth? Mm -hmm. Trisha said, I agree with Lynette. Employers tend to dump in the performer simply because they feel they can handle it Ooh. dump on probably dump on the performer so um the one ex being an excellent performer trisha was um giving her thoughts on that if it's going in the direction that i think it is i can definitely see that because they'll be like oh so and so can handle it you know they were able to do this and it's like wait that's that's not a part of my plate that's, mm -hmm. that's not a part don't All bring right. that over here um yeah so lynette just expound upon it she said if we do the job with excellence folks always come to you those jokers don't want to read manuals procedures etc okay i see exactly what she said lynette said go read the manuals go go read the policies go educate yourself i okay i indeed, get you lynette. indeed so let me pause here real quick. Uh, so for those of you who are just joining us, uh, I am here with Miss Isis Petway, who is out of Little Rock, Arkansas. And we are talking about navigating mental health in the workplace. Navigating mental health in the workplace. Why is that a thing? And we've talked about how much money is costing us in uh, loss, productivity, and such, as well as we've talked a little bit about the hidden disabilities. And now we're talking about what some of the stressors are. So, yeah. All right. Um, so thank you all so much for engagement. I got more questions coming. Don't okay. you worry. <laughs> All right, so let's talk stigma. Let's talk one of the biggest barriers to um, why we don't have this conversation in the first place. So uh, first thing first, stigma makes it difficult for employers to gauge the mental health needs of their employees. I'm not going to walk in and tell my boss that I have this particular diagnosis. I'm just going to manage it in the best way possible, do what I got to do, because mm -hmm. stigma says if I talk about it, then it's going to be eyes on me and then I'm going to be uncomfortable. I'm going to dive mm -hmm. into that a little bit later. Right. Um, stigma tends to create mental barriers, uh, barring employees from speaking up or seeking help. Um, employees fear facing discriminatory behavior from coworkers and superiors, um, social exclusion and being perceived as lacking in competence. That's mm -hmm. a huge one. And then not being perceived as lacking in confidence. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Um, you can look at it as, okay, you know, think about the stereotypes around mental health, mental illness, talking about it. And so what happens if, you know, I, I really am not feeling good. It has nothing to do with my current 
diagnosis, like I just got a cold or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I call in the work because I'm not feeling good. You know, I don't control what the boss thinks, but I know that I'm not feeling good. So, you know, but is my boss going to be thinking, oh, you know, maybe, maybe they lying. Maybe they, you know, are, they they don't just want to tell me they're dealing with, you know, whatever it is, is going on with them mentally. So you can create certain stories. And so for some people, they're just like, I'm not going to say nothing. You know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so because they don't want to deal with the social exclusion, they don't want to deal with being perceived as lacking, like they can't keep up or do their job. Yeah. Um, and then not being able to seek help can have a negative impact on employee uh, performance. Um, one of the reasons that a lot of people do not use their benefits for employee assistance program, um, there's a lot of fear around, will this get back to my boss? Will this, um, you know, if they take Mm -hmm. notes, uh, you know, can my boss find it? And Mm -hmm. so there's a lot of stigma around that. And then, you know, even in saying I'm going to, you know, to therapy, well, for what? For what? That's not their business, but why you're going is not their business. But, you know, there's that, of course, there's that stigma. And so um, So that's... Donda said stigma is a violation of ethical principles such as autonomy. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So real quick, we got um, Michael Cork on the line, who's a good friend of mine, and whose radio show I was on this morning. He's on 95.3 FM here in Tallahassee, the Michael Cork morning show, Mondays through Friday from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. I hope I did a good plug for you. He said, you have to train your coworkers how to communicate with you. If you're the reliable resource, every time they come to you, they'll continue to come. Point them to other resources. That's true. Okay. Well, Michael just said, put up some boundaries. <laughs> he did. He did. Michael just said, put up them, them workplace boundaries. Right. Um. Yeah. But I, what I will say is this, as because Lynette brought this point up earlier, and I'm I'm saying it in the context as as Black folks in the workplace, we have to navigate so differently, um, mm-hmm. especially when working around boundaries, when talking about what it means to show up, you know, authentic, 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 in authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, this lab is we've been you know listening and talking all day. Um, because of the different stereotypes and the different microaggressions and the different things that we already have to to deal with. And so even us navigating mental health in the workplace is going to look different than others um, because we're coming in with some, we're coming in with different, different layers. Um, all right. So coming back to the bigger picture, one of the things that is being talked about is how do we create healthy work environments? Like, what do we do to really have this conversation? What do we really do to begin the process of reducing and or getting to the point of eliminating stigma? And so, you know, first thing first is we got to name the things. We got to say the things out loud. Um, you have to create an environment where it is brave. It does feel safe. Like, I have to know that I'm safe. Um, and having these conversations with you. So that's one of the, the things mm. that they highlight. So uh, Rudy, who's in L- in uh, Cali, said, yes, others can have their care animals at work. Hmm. Hmm. All right. And that is very true. Um, you know, and hmm. these are not uh, CNI animals. These are emotional what do they call them? Emotional... Emotional support animals. Support animals, yes. Yes, yes, yes. And notice I said animals, not dogs. hmm Which means that the type of, of um, being has expanded. That's very interesting. It is <laughs> interesting. That is really interesting. Um... <laughs> I know that we have what Rudy's response. What his comment? <laughs> I see it, Rudy. <laughs> Brother Rudy, yes, says the things out loud. Um, <laughs> He's calling it okay. All right, what we have to say? All the things you were saying. <laughs> he said all. The things. Okay, coming back to creating those uh, those healthy work environments. Um. 
again, addressing mental and behavioral health um, have become urgent. And the pandemic, the onset of the pandemic basically highlighted everything that a lot of people already knew this was happening. But the pandemic put the magnifying glass on it and said, listen, red alert, red flags, we are not okay. We've been telling y'all this, but we are now at, you know, level 10 and above. Um, Mm -hmm. And so one of the things in the findings, um, people are wanting to move into uh, most important in improving mental health outcomes. This is what they found. Um, getting the company to invest, um, managerial support and employee empowerment. So what does that look like? So one of the things under company investment, not going to read too many of them. Um, but one thing that they they're saying is companies have got to invest in developing supportive managers, which correlates into overall healthier workplaces. Um, they need company leadership to speak openly. So that means like your VPs, your, your um, if you're in academia, your vice chancellors, your chancellors, um, your CEOs, they need them to speak openly about mental health and providing uh, mental health training, um, you know, awareness and resources. You know, what does that look like? Um, and then also, you know, kind of tailoring it, you know, so what does it maybe look like for this department? What does it look like for this department? Um, you know, so that's one of the things is we need companies to really invest and provide the, you know, the resources, like you got to put money into these things Mm -hmm. if you want your employees to be okay, because if your employee morale is up, then things will get done. So that's one of the findings is y'all got to spend money. Um, I'm gonna stop there real quick. Anything? Okay. okay. No, that's good. Um, so Lynette said, "Yes, I don't mind the questions. The root is being constantly interrupted when, which can, which can be a huge stressor. My boundary is time blocking on my calendar, which is a great idea." Mm-hmm. Listen, holding to them calendars will save you every time. Nope, I'm unavailable. Can't mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can't. Yeah. I can't do it. I'm sorry. No, I'm really not sorry. No, I, I can't do it. It's a no. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's a no. Um. Okay. The next thing so, that they so I'm setting sorry. up boundaries. It sounds like is is going to be key. Absolutely, and mm-hmm. that's going to come into employee empowerment. Um, okay. All right. So the next thing in creating a healthy work environment, um, they talked about managerial support. And this is what this looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, If you are a manager, how do you provide it? Okay, providing the appropriate level of guidance and assist employees with their workload management. Um, So that means being aware of who has what on their load. And if they tell you that it's it's overwhelming them. How are you creating a space where they even feel safe in saying that to you so that they don't feel like they're you know, going to be looked at as incompetent or, you know, uh, like Lynette was saying, that's where that excellent performer comes in. Like, no, 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 no. I, mm-hmm. I need this to come off my plate. Otherwise, right. I, I'm not going to be able to function and do what I need to do. So as a manager, how are you creating that space where that employee can come and say, hey, I don't I can't take this. I can't take this on my plate without Mm -hmm. fearing repercussions, um, you know, without fearing, you know, repercussions. Okay. Um, The other part. Okay, so what do you call that? Workload monitoring or? You can call it workload monitoring. Um, I don't know if it ever had a name. I would just be like, I would tell my bosses because they created that environment. I'll be like, I I can't, I can't take this on because you've already given me like six other projects and I I can't take this on the make seven. Um, (laughs) maybe a prioritization of workload. There you go. Prioritization. Yes. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Um, Miss Quay is on. Hey, Quay. She said, hi, everyone. I'm tardy to the party. Is Miss Pedway reading notes or from a book? Notes. (laughs) (laughs) If you've been, yeah, if I was on here before and everybody knows I have my notes, I like to be prepared. But actually, this comes from um, I did a presentation for some physicians um, back in November and also back in June. It was part of their CEUs um, on workplace uh, this this very topic. And so I asked Nicole if I could bring it and I came prepared (laughs) because I like for y'all to have the facts. And so um, 
they they made me they were like hey you got to have three resources and i was like cool um and so when you work in an academic setting you get uh access to certain uh libraries and so i was just like this works um oh, but yes Quaylen, miss Quaylen is all about some notes so she's <laughs> loving it so yes i have my notes all right um, what's another okay managerial support looks like noticing the signs of increased uh, stress or burnout in employees. Um, I'll give you an example. Um, I will forever be grateful for this boss, um, but she started noticing that I was slacking in my productivity. And she started noticing I was coming in later and she called me in her office and she said, I need you to take the next two days off. She mm -hmm. said, you're not okay. And you're not gonna tell me that you're not okay. Um, because this was like the first job I had after my layoff. And I just, you know, I was in a mode of feeling like I had to prove myself. And that's a whole nother conversation to mental health layoffs, all that kind of stuff. Um, but she started noticing, she said, you are not at where I know you can be. She said, you're tired. And, um, she said, so you take the next two days off. I don't want to hear from you. I don't want to see you till Monday. Mm. And I was just like, Oh, yeah, she's got to fire me. And she was like, you know, when I came back, she was just like, no, 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 no. I could tell that you were off. Mm -hmm. But she says, you're such a workaholic. You were not going to take that time because, mm -hmm. you know, she understood my circumstances and everything that was happening in my life at that point. Um, and again, because she had created that environment where I could go talk to her and be open with her. Um, and so, yeah, she she pulled me in and she said, I don't want to see you back until monday I, I we we got it we can handle it you know and so, that meant the world to me that's yeah no she was she was special yes um and you know hopefully your boss will be so attuned to you that and care enough about you to do something like that um but it actually lends itself to my course question, which is, as a manager, how do you navigate the required demands with the sensitivity of overwhelming your employees? When do you decide an employee just can't cut it? That's a good question. Um, for her, I'm just, I'm just going to speak on my experience now. If there are other managers in the, in the, in the room, All right. Y'all come forward to Michael's in. question, Time. right? Y'all chime on, on in. in. <laughs> um, for her, she knew my quality of work and mm. she knew what I could do. You know, she'd seen me be on time and, you know, she knew that part of me. And she opened the door even more to say, look, I need you to come to me when things become too much instead of us being reactive we, you know, we got to turn it around. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once I got that rest and she was like, okay, I don't want that to happen again. <laughs> you come let me know. <laughs> so I can only speak from my lived experience with the supervisors that I've had, especially that one. I will work for her at any point in time. I don't care where she is. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you, you are going to um, enjoy this uh, mental health and well-being framework from the U.S. Surgeon General's office because the first uh, essential is protection from harm, and under protection of harm is in enable inadequate rest. That part. Yep. And so that's what the employer is supposed to be doing. Um, promoting practices that can better assure protection from harm and rest, um, adequate rest is one of those things that protect you from harm. And it does. When you think about it in any setting, but again, for right now, my background is I'm working in a hospital setting. Right. So if those physicians are burnt out, if those nurses are burnt out, um, they're not going to be any good to their patients. And again, we work in a hospital, you know, we have um, Jayco, you know, we've got people that we have to answer to. So we're always monitoring like workplace accidents and, you know, different things of that nature. And so working in that, working in that particular setting, you want to make, I love having this conversation. I had a doctor who gave me feedback. Mm -hmm. um, you want to make sure people are rested. And so it means, 
at some point, we all have to come together. One of the reasons that I absolutely love my chancellor, the CEO, the chancellor um, over the hospital is when it came to COVID, we were, I mean, staffing was down, people were out with COVID. And uh, we just all, it was like all hands on deck. Like he was delivering meals to patients' rooms. He was like, listen, I don't, my title don't matter right now. This hospital Mm -hmm. has to run. My employees are burning out. So he, you know, he took that white coat off. He got with hospitality. He got with the cafeteria staff, you know, and he was, he was lead. He was showing us, he was modeling that for us. Like when I say all hands on deck, that don't mean I sit in a C-suite. I'm coming down with y'all. And that's, and that's exactly what he did. Um, And so, you know, and it was like, okay, hey, can we get people to volunteer? We need people to, you know, temperature and, you know, things of that nature. And so what's happened is by him modeling that it has influenced other leaders in the hospitals, other managers, like if the chancellor can do it, what's your excuse? You don't have one. Right. So, yeah. That's good. That's really good. Warren said, there are so many forms of mental illness that people face on a daily basis. And some people aren't even aware that their co-workers are an incident away from clicking on someone, cussing folks out, et cetera. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, Rudy wanted to know, were you able to not think about the job in those two days? Absolutely. I went to sleep and I'm a mama. So my focus was like, oh, I go volunteer at my kid's school. And that's exactly what I did. I went and sat at my kid's school and I was able to get some things done. Um, Here's what I will say has influenced that is in 2012, I was laid off from my job when I was living in Georgia. Mm -hmm. And so that taught me a long time ago that you're replaceable at any point in time. And these organizations are going to run without with or without you. And so uh, take your vacation days, take your PTO, um, take that sick time if you need to go, you know, to the doctor. Um, because at the end of the day, that was a lesson for me to learn that at any point in time, they gonna hand you that slip and be like, okay, bye. So <laughs> you got to take care of you. So yes, I was absolutely able to not think about that job for two days. All right, cool. Uh, so Michael Cork has another question. He said, "Is if as an employer, I require you to work 40 hours a week, is it my responsibility to assure you're resting during your time off? So I, I don't, I'm not thinking that that's what they're saying, Cork, although I, I get your question. However, if you notice a fatigued employee, especially if their job, they're going to put themselves or others in danger because they're fatigued, then I think the responsibility is to sit them down um, because they're going to hurt themselves or others. So in some regards, yes, uh, for safety purposes. Um, but it's not like you, you know, monitoring them or I should say monitoring them, but you know, you, it's not like you, uh, stopping by their house to say, you know, are you getting your six to eight hours a night? Nothing like that, but you know what we're trying to say. Right. No, they, the employee at that point has to take responsibility for that, but you just saying, Hey, we're going to give, Hey, go take this time. Like that opens doors to say, oh, I can go, I can go to sleep, you know? So yeah, I don't think you have to stop. Like Nicole said, I don't think you have to stop by and, you know, have a camera on them and be like, you know, I need to make sure you rest. And, you know, just even opening that door to say, I see you, I see that you're tired. Mm -hmm. You create a rapport right there that is going to be unmatched. Like, well, they see me. Yes, yes, yes. Um, Okay. Go ahead, because I know you had some. <laughs> okay, I got one more. I got one more point, which okay, is probably important. Um, all right. So, as an employee, these are just different ways because I think we forget the ways that we can advocate for ourselves as employees at times. Mm-hmm. Um, so I said it earlier: take your days. But as an employee, you are always going to be your best advocate. Um, ask for what you need and want with your manager. Um, be informed about your company's mental health services and supports. Also, read the policies. Mm -hmm. Um, 
when your manager asks, provide constructive feedback to them about their performance. Um, so, and so then, I know you rolling through them quickly now, but you said be informed about what your employer. Oh, wants. be informed about the company's mental health services and supports. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of times um, companies will offer certain things or they may have it set up where you get discounts at certain places in your area just because you work at a particular organ, you know, a particular place. Mm -hmm. So double check that. Um, the, like, for instance, I get a discount at a gym here because I work at a particular organization. Um, if you do want to use your employee assistance program, check into that. Your, your job has basically paid for you to go to therapy for so many sessions. Use that benefit um, if you feel safe and comfortable with it. Um, let me see. Trish is absolutely right. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. She said, besides HR, might like you monitoring your employees on their time off. Mm -hmm. so, um, yes. Yes. Um, Alethea. Um, EAP. Yes. Yes. So, you know, with that, your your boss has either con your organization has either contracted or they've got people that work directly in the organization, um, you know, counselors and things of that nature. So mm -hmm. use those, you know, use that benefit. But um, what are those mental health services, you know, that are backed and supported by your company? Yes. Um, being able to have that dialogue, constructive feedback with your manager, um, especially if they ask you um, acts for reasonable accommodations that support your mental health condition. And so are there days where you may need to be off? Um, are there days when you have to check in on certain things? Like, are you making sure that you have certain accommodations at work? Um, and then as always, I'm just gonna reiterate, take your time off. We are at a point in the year where I always, I'm always in observation mode. And it's because this is the time of year where people are trying to rush and be off work because they're going to lose their vacation time. I have a coworker right now losing three weeks of vacation time because he didn't take enough time off in the year. Um, and you don't, you don't get that back. So please, please take your days. Please take your days. Take your days. Take your days. Um, please do that. Um, All so right. So I heard... Work. Look, she, look, Ice is trying to wrap this thing on up. No, I'm not. No, I'm oh. not. <laughs> it's all good. I, I, I love it. I heard workload prioritization. Take your days. Uh, be informed about mental health services offered by your employer. Uh, dialogue and con constructive... Did you say constructive criticism? No. Constructive feedback with your feedback. manager. Okay, feedback with manager. All right, and reasonable accommodations. Mm -hmm. Did I get them all? You did. Okay, and then these are some other things that you can do just for yourself to kind of check in mm -hmm. for your own well-being. You know, throughout the workday. Okay. Um, did you eat? Oh, you got water. I'm gonna put my head down on that. <laughs> did did you eat today? Have you had you know? Do you have your water? Have you made sure that you've got sustenance? Um, are you getting enough sleep? You know, are you getting adequate sleep? You know, what are some things that are interrupting your routine? Um, you know, are you on particular medications? You need to talk to your doctor about I'm those. Not, are you taking your medication? Are you yeah? Are you taking meds if you have to have help with sleep? Um, you know, so that, you know, are you making sure that if you're on medication management, that you are adequately adequately following that that schedule? Um, did you just kind of stop and take a deep breath today? Here's what I mean by that. A lot of times we are walking around with our shoulders clenched, our jaws clenched, everything is tight. You're breathing because, you know, you, you live in, but like, have you kind of stopped and just kind of been like, okay, let me just kind of mm. take a deep breath. Like, have you unclenched? Um when we talk about workplace prioritization, have you given yourself permission to let something wait? What can wait? A lot of times we try to like get all these things done because like Lynette said, it's that excellent performer. But what can wait? Like, you know what? That's not due till next week. Let me put it over here. So what can you give yourself permission? What can wait? Mm -hmm. 
Have you allowed yourself to tell someone what support looks like for you? Mm. And then did you stop and say an encouraging word to yourself? Because a lot of times it's easy to shift into that negative self-talk. But have you thought about and told yourself, hey, this is what went right today. Mm. And I'm going to celebrate that. Celebrate the small things. We we love to celebrate the big things. It's wonderful. But don't forget to celebrate the small things. You know what? I cleared out my email inbox. We're going to celebrate that. But those are some different things to think about um, oh, good. and just kind of caring for yourself and, you know, your own wellness needs. You know, did you get some sustenance? You sleeping? Take a breath. Permission to wait. Mm-hmm. Does somebody know what support looks like for you? You don't advocate for yourself. Nobody can help you. And then did you tell yourself what was going right instead of what was going wrong? So my my um, one of my, my oldest and dearest friends, Ra, said, unfortunately, I think some workplaces do not want to discuss or deal with employees' mental health because poor management is creating stress and or a bad mental health environment for their employees. All right. And Sherry agreed. Yes. All right. Ozzy said Moringa. So Ozzy is the the herbalist. The, you know, Moringa is one of his his magical uh, solutions. Uh, He had a comment earlier that I wanted to. Oh, yeah, he's talking about rest because Ozzy's come done a couple shows on rest. So he said that he's heading to bed right after the segment, right after the show. So because rest is important. All right, cool. So, yeah, um, those were good. Did you eat? Did you have water? Are you taking your meds on schedule? Are you breathing? What can wait? And what does support look like for you? All good stuff. All good stuff. All right. Cool. I got one last question for the listeners. This okay. Is- y'all ready? Right. Last question for the last, night. Last question of the night. Thank y'all for hanging in and being here. All right. So what is one thing that you are doing or would like to do to create the conversation around mental health in the workplace? Mm. One thing in the comments. One thing you'd like to do in order to create mental wellness in the workplace. Conversations around mental wellness in the workplace. Conversations around mental wellness in the workplace. Okay. All right. In the comments, what are we doing? (laughs) Yes, you do have Nicole on every Monday, my cork. Yes, you do. And I'm grateful for it. Thank you so much, my friend. Yeah. Shout out to Nicole for this platform. We are grateful for Nicole. I appreciate it. I thank y'all for being here. All right. Trisha said, I brought it up in my interview. Okay, good deal, Trisha. What's up? Nice. Uh, Donda said, affirmations to others. Yes. I love a good affirmation. Love a good affirmation as well. Don, I'm going to have to talk to you. sound like y'all are doing some innovative things in your workplace. All right. Anybody else? What are some of the things that you either are doing or want to do to have conversations around mental wellness in the workplace? Uh, let's see. I openly disclose because I have superpowers. Yes, you do, Lynette. Thank you for sharing it. Yes, 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 yes. All right. Love it. I appreciate y'all. She said I tried and I left. Yeah, Roz is a, is a, a part-timer right now, a short time or so. It's all good, though. They're going to miss her when she's gone, though. Mm-hmm. They really are. All right. Uh, Whitney said we had a segment in our department retreat. Nice. Okay. Nice. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Uh, Sherry said, I offer a time out from my employees when I recognize their stress and need a break. Yes. Thank you so much, Miss Sherry. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's great. 
glad to hear these are good good um tools tips and techniques that others can use in their workspace hopefully absolutely yeah all right all right well um maybe there might be a few more comments but we can uh go ahead and start kind of wrapping it up hold on she also said they take a walk they're they're given an opportunity to cry in my office if necessary now you know what you just said something right there because that ability to grieve sometimes a lot of times it can just lift the weight off your shoulder absolutely so holding space for somebody to grieve that's powerful absolutely that i mean it is i remember when a co-worker had come back her mother had passed away and that actually you know i thought about that as, as i was making this presentation and i just you know started thinking about you know the people who are coming back you know if they've been out on bereavement leave you know thinking about the co-worker who may have had a miscarriage and nobody even knew you know she was pregnant and so you know, she's probably coming back to work within 20, like, you know, within a week's time. But, you know, you, you're navigating, but you're also thinking about this loss. And so, yeah, my productivity is down. I'm not present. And so, you know, you know, you start thinking about those different factors. And it's just like, this is why this conversation matters. Mm -hmm. For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Lynette said, Nicole, I've learned so much from your show. My identity is clear and Black resiliency is undefeated. Love it. Yes. All right. Uh, Whitney said, thanks for the wonderful information. You are welcome, Whitney. And Sherry said, very important. I think she was responding to the um, holding space for someone who is grieving. So, yes. I don't think we grieve enough. We don't. So that's, again, great that you do that, Sherry. Uh, Chris said, I provide lunch for my staff so that I can get a one-on-one -on -one so that they can open up about issues that they may be having. All right. Great. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. That's another great idea. Yeah, Y'all are on it. I love this. I know, right? These are great responses. So thank y'all for sharing. We really appreciate it. All right. So Miss Isis, how can the peoples connect with you? Well, they can find me on Instagram. Um, it's uh, therapist underscore Isis J. Uh, so you can reach out to me there and I would love to connect and just kind of go from there. All right. And you are in Arkansas. I am in Little Rock, Arkansas. So right now I am only licensed to serve clients here. Mm -hmm. um, and so hopefully this time next year, I will have full LPC licensure and be able to get licensed in other states. But we are on this journey to 3000. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, y'all definitely follow her on Instagram. She puts out great content. I'm oftentimes sharing some of her inspirational mental health related and focused um, posts in my story. So you want to, you know, keep up with what ISIS has going on for sure, for sure. All right. Anything you have coming up or that you wish to share? And I'm closing <laughs> outside of, you know, we told them where you can connect, but anything you wish to share in closing as we prepare to, to wrap up? Um, absolutely. Um, the NAP ministry is definitely an inspiration. So I just want to encourage everyone that we don't have to continue to hustle for our worth. Um, you are enough as you are. And uh, rest, rest is, rest is a, is a, uh, it's important. I can't remember the quote, but Audrey, uh, Audrey Lord. And uh, your self-care is revolutionary. So y'all take care of yourselves. These organizations ain't going nowhere. Um, they will function with or without you, but there's only one you. So please take care of yourselves. Um, enjoy this holiday season as best you can uh, with the tools that you have. So let's take care of each other as well. All right. I love that. I'm going to have to listen. I'm going to have to. Yeah. No, that's. That's special right there. <laughs> Sherry said, thank you, Isis. Continue your mission and ministry. God bless you all. Oh, beautiful. Thank you. thank you. If you all found this beneficial, let us know in the comments, please. Give us some heart, some love. Some of you already have been commenting, so I appreciate it. Uh, Ozzy said, awesome clothing. Thank you, Ozzy. Appreciate you being here. 
Uh, Lynette said, yes, the NAP ministry. I love it. Rest is resistance to this system. Yes, 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 yes. So please get your rest. Please, please. Eric, Dr. Asha came to my former job and did a mental health training. Great interview. Love this. Okay, good, 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 good. Michael Court, great show. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. All right. So for those of you who have not subscribed to the Conversations with Nicole YouTube channel, I invite you to do so. Um, we need the support. And we are actually doing a contest right now where um, we are encouraging folks to watch one show a day in its entirety or listen to one show a day in its entirety. And the person with the most views and the most uh, comments is going to get a CWN swag bag. All right. So this runs through December 31st. So just one video a day and subscribe. Got to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Got to be subscribed. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and watch one video a day. And the person with the most views, most comments will win a a CWN swag bag. All right. All right. Javon, hadn't talked to you in a while, but good to see you, sis. She said, great session. And I will use some of the different techniques with my staff that I haven't used yet. Wonderful. That's what we hope. Uh, Sharice, thank you for being here. Donda, thank you for being here. All right. You are welcome, Miss Sherry. Thank you for your input tonight. Sharice, thank you as well. And Miss Trisha, thank you. Glad to see you here tonight. So appreciate you all. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So we will be back on Wednesday. Um, Wednesday. Uh, oh, my goodness. It just escaped me just then. Hold on. I do have it. I'm going to tell y'all in just a minute. <laughs> Miss Paul, <laughs> Miss Paul, Miss Paul, Miss Paul is coming on. Uh, I'm sorry, y'all. It's just been a long day. Shinobia Paul, that's who it is. Shinobia, she might even be on here just didn't say anything. We are talking about mindset and money. Mindset and money. Skip the resolution. Set intentions for 2023. So we are going to get you set up and ready for 2023. And hopefully you won't be overspending and go into 2023 in debt. We're trying to avoid that. So mindset and money. That's our topic on Wednesday. All right, good people. Y'all have a great rest of the evening. And Isis, again, thank you so much. Have a happy holiday. You too. Happy holidays, y'all. Thank you again, Nicole. You're welcome. Bye.